the Dave Tate quote that becomes more and more meaningful the older I get and the more experience I gain is the everything that I needed to know about life I learned in the gym. And I'll try to wrap my head around that a little bit more and get a little bit deeper as we go through the session, but it is dynamic effort upper day, speed benching, week three of the wave. And for those of you who watched the previous two weeks of speed bench, you'll know that I started this wave pretty aggressive for where I am loading wise in terms of the pec surgery rehab stuff that I am going through right now. And a little bit nervous sitting here thinking about what I want to or what I'm supposed to put on the bar today. But when you're a little bit nervous about getting through a speed work session, really the only thing to do is to <laughs> nut up a little bit and push that bar fast and make the best of it. And like, if the pack feels sketchy, I won't force myself to do it because I don't want to sacrifice the pack right now. But assuming that it's just heavy and I need to push hard, it, I'm just gonna push hard and have fun and go for it. So let's go for it. All right, got 195 on the bar, running the three rounds of three set clusters of three reps again, taking you know a minute or so between each of the rounds of clusters, every set going from close, mid, wider-ish grip. And again, like the wide grip isn't all that wide <laughs> because of the pack, but goal is to make it look crisp, make it feel crisp, and just push the bar as hard as I freaking can right now. Okay. That actually felt better than I was expecting going in. And next one, just got to find a little bit more rear delt spread, get the upper back locked in a little bit tighter. So let's find her. Bah! All right, last one, more crank, more squeeze, dynamic effort, is an attitude. Yeah. There we go. And the whole dynamic effort is an attitude thing. 195 today went better than 155 did two weeks ago. And had I gone into this all limp dicked like my brain was telling me to be afraid of the bar, it probably wouldn't have gone very well. And like the speed work days, when you don't necessarily want to bring it, you don't feel like bringing it, What's important is that you find a way to push into that bar hard, even if you are tired, even if you are fatigued, even if you don't feel like pushing hard at all, because that is how you're going to get something out of it. And going back to that Dave quote, like this is why I'm doing it. Not pressing 195, obviously, because that isn't impressive at all, but the overcoming fear, the overcoming self-doubt, the making myself go through the process and do the things that I don't want to do, like that is where things are going to happen. And that's why I'm trying so hard to be honest about the days when I'm in my head and the days when I'm not feeling it and the days when I really don't want to push. Because if you want to get good at powerlifting, if you want the outcome of a big total, you're going to have to get good at overcoming that shit. And at the same time, you're also gonna to have to get good at differentiating what it is and what it is not worth overcoming.
And don't take that the wrong way because sometimes the thing that you have to overcome is going to be taking a step back and taking weight off of the bar. And like you guys saw my squat on the weekend, you guys saw my incline last Friday. Those were prime examples of where at this stage of my career, I know it's not worth the injury risk to try to push through that. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to try to push through elsewhere. Like running inclines today, it still feels sketchy as shit, but I know that if I want to get that pack stronger in that range, if I want to get used to pushing through the clavicular head, if I want to get used to feeling that tension, I need to train inclines, but it's going to be a matter of like riding that line of sketchiness to the point where it's the right amount of sketchy to drive me forward, not so sketchy that I'm at risk of setting myself back. And I'm sure if you guys have been around, you've heard, you know, the crusty old guy at the gym whining about how training isn't fun. He doesn't want to be there and he's still just doing it and going through the motions and blah, 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 blah. And that isn't what I'm trying to be here or say here because these days when I don't feel like it going in and like I'm worried that it's going to be a bad session going in, they often end up being the funnest training days ever just because I have to pull something out of myself that I wasn't sure was there when I walked into the gym or into the basement. And again, it's all attitude. Like I could sit here and whine about how not fun it is for 205 to feel this bad when my best ever close grip incline was 250 pounds more than this. And like thinking about that, it kind of does suck how rough 205 feels today, but it's also exciting to know that there's that much ground to be made up. And it's exciting to know that if I just put the right amount of effort in for the, enough time and I'm patient with it, that climb is going to turn out pretty damn fun. And like, that is what makes this shit exciting. And like the weight on the bar is what everyone's excited about. It's what everyone wants to think about. It's what everyone thinks they're doing it for. But more often than not, when you get to that big number, when you hit that PR, when you reach that goal, in a way it feels empty and you almost realize that isn't actually what you were doing it for. And you'll hear lifters talk about post meet blues all of the time. And if you haven't been there, it's like you go through an entire meat prep so fixated on the day. You're obsessed over it. You're obsessed with doing everything right that you can. Your training's nailed, your sleep's nailed, your recovery's nailed. Everything is nailed and so much effort and sacrifice is poured into that one single day. And then you get to that day and you smash everything, like everything that you wanted to happen happens. And it feels so freaking good on that day. And you're just, 
you're at a all time high because you did everything that you were hoping to achieve. But the next day and the next day after that feeling starts to fade and you're left with this big gaping void in your soul that just feels completely empty. And you're like, what was that even for? What did I even accomplish? What did I even do? And if you aren't prepared for that, it can be crushing. And it's funny because like a bad meet, a bad meet can be one of the best things for your training because after you have a bad meet, like you're, you're pissed off. You're angry at yourself for screwing up. You're angry at yourself for not doing things right. You're angry at yourself for the things that you could have done better. And if you're like me, you're damn sure not going to let yourself make the same mistakes again for the next prep. And you have so much fire that you can draw upon to make sure that the next one goes better. But a good meet, if your head isn't wrapped around it, it can be really, really tough to get back into the groove of things just because of that emptiness that often follows accomplishment. Dips are feeling way better today, Miana. Good, they look a lot better, actually. Able to get into it more. Able to push the top more. Nice. <sighs> <sighs> Still, hard as shit on the arms. And I think what it comes down to is this false expectation of what the numbers what the outcome is supposed to mean. Like everyone is focused on the numbers, rightfully so. Everyone wants to hit their PRs. Everyone wants to do good. And because of that, we almost expect it to mean more than it feels like it does when we get there. And for me, at least, the best way that I've found to combat that is learning to acknowledge that even if the numbers, the PRs, the outcome is what I want out of this, that's not the real reason I'm doing it. And it's not what I'm really getting out of this. It's the work that I have to do. It's the discipline and the patience that the work forces me to develop that I'm really doing this for. And that big lesson, realizing that it isn't the outcome, but the effort that gets me to the outcome that I'm really doing it four is the most valuable lesson that powerlifting has taught me about life. And I figure that now is as good a time as any to quit trying to be so deep and bang out the rest of these accessories. Dropped a couple notches off the stack because that one felt heavy and the elbows were a little bit unhappy with it. So run it lighter, run it higher up, try to desensitize a bit by the end of the set. Nice pump 
Nice stretch. Nice squeeze. That feels better. <sighs> Getting a little less sharp every single rep. I'm going to run another here because that actually felt really nice on the elbows. Just trying to get that thickness. trying to like come up with a fat bottom girls version for elbow growth but ah, brains too focused on flexing triceps ah. <sighs> gonna run the same shoulder superset again except this time i'm gonna lead with the dumbbell cleans and doing them seated because lets me get a little bit more Thoracic flexion, thoracic extension into the movement. I don't know about these seated. We'll, we'll give it a whirl. That's too heavy still. Oh, fuck. Ah. Mm. Still trying to like squeeze the kettlebell together isometrically as I raise. Oh, that's so dirty, like right on the inside of the front delt. Ooh. The fact that Miana can beat me at those is just sad. Gonna make an Instagram reel out of this set, so hold on guys, get ready for this one. Another old school west side upper back exercise, the seated dumbbell clean. Now this is less of a clean and more of a thoracic extension into a shrug, into an upright row, into a flip around, into external rotation and scapular depression. When you run it at full speed, it's gonna look something like this. And you're just gonna do reps until you die of a massive delt and upper back pump, but you don't actually wanna die, so stop before that point. Gonna have to do that one again because I don't want Instagram's algorithm to think I'm telling people that they need to actually die in the gym. So much harder doing that set in that order. Instagram reel, attempt number two. 
another old school West Side upper back exercise, the seated dumbbell clean. Now it's less of a clean than it is a thoracic extension into a shrug, into an upright row, into a flip, into external rotation and scapular depression. When we run it at full speed, it's gonna look something like this. And as far as sets and reps go, all you're gonna do is just bang out reps until it feels like your delts and upper back are about to explode. <sighs> I figure it's better to not talk about dying for the Instagram algorithm. Who knows? Near death experience achieved. And for curls, because I want to get to bed tonight, just gonna bang out concentration curls, left arm, right arm, back and forth. I'll do two sets of a regular curl, two sets hammer. Don't know if I'll show all of it on the edit because it might be boring to watch that many sets of curls in a row, but I promise you, I'm gonna get that pump. <sighs> I wonder how many of my life's problems would be solved had I listened better to C.T. Fletcher in my early 20s. I wouldn't have small arms still. That would be the main problem that would be solved. And running more of these spread eagles. And like thinking about what I could do on these at my peak multiply squat strength. Like I was running them with a hundred pound plate above my head. So what did I do with this 71 pound kettlebell? I didn't even know what this way is. I had to read it. I'm gonna have to try to gradually migrate it further and further up my torso as I get stronger and then eventually get something heavier to hold. So freaking hard. And like the ab work, end of the session, I'm tired. I really don't want to push it. But I also know that if I want my squat to show up in May, it's gonna need to be pushed. <sighs> And that is that. Good session, productive session, especially considering the anxieties that I had going into it. And to circle back to the Dave quote that I talked about at the beginning, the everything that I needed to know about life, I learned in the gym. Realizing that it's not the outcome, it is the process, the journey, has been so freaking 
productive for me everywhere. And like, think about it. Think about any story. Think about any movie you've watched, any TV show, any book you've read. It's the conflict that drives the story. It is the thing that the dude needs to overcome. And think about how boring it would be if someone was just this invincible object that never had to fight for anything, never had to work for anything, never had to earn anything. And they just waltzed on through the entire novel, never being challenged in the slightest. It would be one boring ass book if that was the case. And we got to remember, like, that is what shapes life. It is the things that we go through that gives it meaning. It's the struggle. It's the things that we have to strive for. And in a way, I was almost reminded of this eerily similar to how I felt after some powerful meets. Like, very, very different circumstance, but I recently had a video on here do super freaking well. Like, not viral by, you know, big person viral terms. Like, it, it did damn good for me, which, don't get me wrong, I am insanely freaking grateful for it. And like, in a way, just like a big total, like, seeing that view count go up is exactly what I was wanting to happen, exactly what I was just like waiting to see one day like turn into it. And I did not expect it to happen this soon. But as I was watching that view count go up, like I just like kept refreshing, kept refreshing, kept refreshing, like seeing the number get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was freaking exciting, but I expected to feel more, I expected to like feel more meaning from seeing that number climb and it just never came. And as it got higher and higher and higher, and as there was never any like wholesome, like fulfillment coming from that number going up, I almost got a little bit sad because it's like, I just put in all of this effort to see this thing happen and I'm not even really feeling anything from it happening. And then it kind of just hit me like, holy shit, this is just like freaking powerlifting. It's not, like I'm not doing it for the views. I know I've talked about this before, but this just affirmed it to me that again, like this, this is not for the views. This is for me. This is for having to learn how to communicate better. This is me learning how to present my ideas. This is me learning how to be more creative. This is me learning more about myself through this process. And this is also me helping others as I learn about myself. And like, yes, views mean that I can help more people, but seeing that number go up, it seeing 10,000 didn't mean any more than the first video that I had get to 100. And realizing that was almost freeing in a way because I was kind of like putting pressure on myself to think like, I need views, I need views, I need views, I need views, I need to get views, I need to get views, I need to get views. And having it happen and realizing that it didn't feel like I wanted it to, it almost like gave me more freedom to not worry about it in a way and like gave me more freedom to embrace the process better. And it's just, it was, it's cool to see it happening. It's cool to know that the effort is paying off in a measurable way, but again, the measurement isn't what it's for. It's the journey along the way. So sorry if that was a little bit too philosophical, guys. Thank you for sticking around this long. And I will see you tomorrow because I am silly and have decided to try to put out a video every single day. So we're going to keep that rolling as long as I can. And the fact that I've kept it rolling this long kind of tells me that I can do it. So there's no reason to stop, even if it is a little bit of extra effort on some days more than others. Peace out. Have a wonderful night.